While we may not see bats often in the wild, they are extremely important to the ecosystem and very important to us humans as well. How can something so ugly, sometimes so small or furry, be such a benefit to us? Well, there's plenty of examples. From dining on pesky mosquitoes to replanting forests, bats help us out in a ton of different ways. And who doesn't love Batman? Well, unless you're a chiroptophobic, that's scared of bats, you can sit back, relax, and observe as we give you the 15 most unique bats in the world. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to The Supreme, and click the notification bell for more lit content. Let's get rolling. Number 15. Raffinesque's Big Eared Bat This bat may be the Dumbo of the bat world. With ears that are as long as half of its tiny body, it's easy to see how this big-eared bat got its name. These bats call the American Southeast their home, but have been seen as far north as Indiana and even Illinois. The bats are relatively tiny, with a body weight of less than a half an ounce and a wingspan of just 11 inches. They typically have been known to live in the swamps, preferring hollowed-out cypress trees to raise their young. The trees provide protection from predators and warmth, a stable internal environment perfect for raising their young. With many swamps being drained and the trees being cut down, these bats have been seen living in old mining shafts, caves, and even abandoned buildings. While this species of bat has never been very abundant, most states believe that their numbers are in decline and its global status has been listed as vulnerable. With proper human intervention and a reverse of this trend of habitat destruction, it may be possible for these little guys to rebound and flourish but only time will tell. Check this guy out. Is this even real? I picture this dude swooping down out of someone's nightmare and terrorizing the town. This has to be a final boss at the end of some virtual reality game. I myself don't have a fear of bats, but I am terrified of this thing. I mean, what would this huge bat king even eat? Who would it eat? Are you afraid of bats or know someone that is? Let us know. Tell us what you think in the comment section using the hashtag open discussion. Number 14. Flying Fox If it looks like a fox and talks like a fox, it might be a bat. One look at these flying foxes and it's easy to see how they got their name. They literally look like a fox with wings. And speaking of wings, just take a look at the wingspan on these furry flyers. They've been known to have wingspans measuring up to six feet wide. Now, don't let the sight of these guys fool you. They're not going to be swooping down and picking you up or biting you and turning you into a Dracula. They are all 100% vegetarian and their diet consists of mainly fruits. They typically travel at night and their young can't fly for the first month, so they always need to be carried around, even through the air. I think they have their giant wings full. Their habitat stretches from Australia up to the mainland Asia, and in this hot climate, these hairy bats need to find a way to keep cool. But if you're thinking of picking one of these guys up as a pet, think again. They stay in such large groups and consume so much fruit that they've been labeled as pests by the United States and other countries and cannot be imported. Sorry. Number 13. Hammer-headed fruit bat. Look at this guy. Just look at them, a face only a bat mother could love. Spread across Central Africa, these bats are widely believed to have carried the Ebola virus. They've been seen in colonies of up to 25 bats, but usually prefer around five. I mean, who wants to share the same tree with 25 roommates? Found in moist and tropical lowland swamps and mangroves across Central Africa, these funny-faced bats are considered pests due to their massive consumption of fruits and other crops. They're also considered poor seed distributors since they tend to eat and drop the seeds where they find them. The males are usually a lot larger than the females and produce a honking sound unlike any other species of bat. With a wingspan of up to 38 inches, the hammer-headed fruit bat has the distinction of being Africa's largest bat. There's no concern for these hardy bats becoming extinct as much of their habitat is protected. However, there is also no limit on hunting these bats and they've been sought for bushmeat. 
and parts of their habitat that isn't protected has seen significant decline due to deforestation and climate change. These airborne fruit terrors will have to be monitored to assure that future generations will be able to keep calling them ugly for a long time to come. Number 12. Fringe-Lipped Bat The Fringe-Lipped Bat also known as the frog-eating bat, is easily identifiable by the fleshy tubercles hanging off the bottom of its chin. Widespread throughout the tropical lowlands of South and Central America, the bat's chin adapters are thought to be able to detect toxin in certain species of frogs while eating. At a max length of just 4 inches and topping out at a weight of 1.6 ounces, this small bat is actually considered medium-sized. Remind me to never buy a car off the guy who thinks that's medium-sized. While known for eating frogs, they also regularly dine on small lizards and large bugs and can be seen circling above its prey and listening for mating calls. After locating its meal, the bat swoops in and immobilizes it with a bite and takes it off to a tree to be eaten. Widespread and abundant, there is no immediate concern of this bat becoming extinct. Number 11. Honduran White Bat Described by many as Marshmallow Puff or even a distant relative of a Furby, these cute little cotton balls with wings are nothing like our last few bats. Covered in white fur and having a bright orange colored face and limbs, it's unknown to scientists why the color of these bats stands out the way that it does. But the popular and widely accepted theory is that the white reflects the green off the leaves better thereby camouflaging them and making it more difficult for predators to spot them. Their little noses turn and grow up from their faces, resembling leaves, and they even come equipped with built-in sunblock in the form of black membrane over their skulls that reflects ultraviolet light. Sounds to me like they come off the assembly line fully loaded. These winged Q-tips are relatively small when compared to other bats on the list. At only four to five centimeters in length, and weighing around 6 grams, they can easily fit in the palm of your hand, and several can comfortably roost together on just one sturdy leaf. These little guys are timid and prefer to hide rather than to seek, and only seek out fruits, so humans are safe. And while not totally endangered, they are listed as near-threatened, as threats to their habitat have landed this fluffy fella on the watch list. <laughs> Blythe's Horseshoe Bat All right. That's enough of the cute bats. Blythe's horseshoe bat can definitely not be confused with our little Honduran friends. Spread across southern Asia, from Afghanistan to Vietnam, this bug muncher is easily identifiable by their nose leaf. It's pointed up to the center of its head and its distinct horseshoe shape. On the island of Tioman, off the coast of Malaysia, this bat has been seen active during the day, flying and searching for prey with little worry of being caught by larger predators. It's thought that these once nighttime only feeders now appear during the day due to the fact that the number of large birds of prey have seemed to be dwindling in the area, possibly due to habitat loss and human intrusion. While not endangered, they have been known to occupy houses, drain coverts, and other man-made tunnels near the forest. <laughs> Tube-nosed fruit bat. This unique species of bat is found solely in the Philippines and is listed as critically endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. The big-nosed bat gets its name from its tube-like nostrils that project from its nose. It's also one of the few striped species of bat it can be seen with a long black stripe down the center of its back and an impressive wingspan of around 22 inches. Living in the lowland forest habitat, it never roosts in urban areas or agricultural areas. Unfortunately, due to human expansion, there is less than 1% of lowland forest habitat left for these nosy bats. The largest known population of these bats is located on Negros Island in a small swath of trees spread over less than a few hundred meters. Hopefully, with habitat conservation, these winged wonders will see a population rebound and be able to flourish. We will just have to wait and see what the future has in store for this tube-nosed bat. Vampire Bats When you think of firefighters, you think of them pulling cats from a tree or burning buildings. When you think of basketball, you probably think of LeBron James slamming home a dunk. And when you think of bats, you think of these guys. Desmodos rotundus, vampire bats. These guys are the nightmare fuel that give the rest of the bat world a bad name. 
While most bats prefer fruits and small insects, these sharp-toothed aviators dine exclusively on blood. And just like a vampire, they sleep during the day and hunt at night, hanging upside down in caves. In colonies of about 100 bats, they feed at night on cows, horses, and other livestock, but have been known rarely to feed off sleeping humans if the opportunity presents itself. Scientists will tell you that their bite doesn't hurt at all. I'll take their word for it. The bats land on the ground and actually crawl over to their victim on all fours. While close to their food source, they use their impressive heat-seeking nose to find where the warm blood is flowing and their small but razor-sharp teeth are used to make a small incision. The bats spend the next 30 minutes sipping the blood while its saliva prevents clotting, ensuring a steady flow. They don't ever drain the victim entirely of blood. As a matter of fact, it's almost a negligible amount. However, they have been known to leave pretty serious infections and diseases, such as rabies. Located throughout Mexico, Central and South America, the bats are thriving. But I'm okay not seeing these guys until Halloween. <laughs> Griffin's Leaf-Nosed Bat Named after the late Professor Donald Griffin in recognition of his research with echolocation and only being discovered in 2012, this new addition to the bat pack has only been found in Vietnam. It's identified, in part, by its nose, which resembles a popped gum bubble covering most of its face. Unlike other bats that use echolocation, these guys don't make noise with their mouths, but rather with their nose. Scientists believe that grooves and channels of its super snout help assist with projecting and receiving sounds, so the bat is able to target its meal with pinpoint accuracy. Preferring small insects such as cockroaches, cicadas, and spiders, the bat will fly low to the ground and attack its prey with lightning-fast speed. With being a relatively new discovery, it's unknown whether or not this bat's population numbers are in decline or if its habitat is endangered. However, the only places where the bats have been seen are national parks, which provides protection from habitat loss and human interference. Spotted Bat Do you want to know how to spot the next bat? The Euderma maculatum, or spotted bat, is easily identifiable by, you guessed it, its spots. This bat is almost entirely jet black with a pair of white spots on its shoulders and one on its tail. It also possesses a pretty awesome pair of ears that are tall and pinkish in color. They're relatively small, weighing about a half an ounce, and only four to four and a half inches long with a wingspan of around 14 inches. These spotted bats have been spotted from lower British Columbia and Canada through the southwestern United States and down through Mexico, preferring dry regions near water sources. Unlike our friends, the vampire bat, these little guys pass on the blood unless you count the blood of insects, they prefer to dine on small moths and will actually rip the moth's wings off just to eat the body. Now that's brutal. While they've been known to travel and occupy a large area, they remain the rarest bats in North America, so little is known about their population. And they remain listed as a species of special concern. It appears that the best thing you can do if you spot one of these guys is to just leave it alone. Visored Bat this bat comes equipped with its own headgear. The visored bat is indigenous to South America, being found only in Venezuela, Peru, Colombia, and Brazil. These big-headed bats prefer moist open forest, and they're pretty small, at a little less than two and a half inches and weighing only 0.6 ounces. They're tiny and have even been found in small holes and cavities in the ground. This species hasn't been widely seen or studied, but what is known is that they eat fruit and have pretty amazing headwear that appears larger in males. They also have a small fold of skin under its chin, though no one is 100% sure what it's for. Hopefully, it's to cover their faces. Have you ever seen these guys? <laughs> McLeod's Horseshoe Bat This is another example of a horseshoe bat. Native to Guinea and Western Africa, this moist cave-dwelling microbat is red-listed and endangered by the IUCN. The small-winged wonder has only been photographed for the first time in 2007 when an expedition into Guinea turned up 16 other McLeods. This evidence led scientists to believe that the bat's habitat is slightly larger than previously thought. 
adding about 130 miles to their known territory, though still residing solely inside of Guinea's borders. Spread throughout the moist savannas, caves, and other underground environments, their habitat is rapidly decreasing due to deforestation. They've also been hunted for bushmeat. At only a few inches long and just over one ounce, you'd wonder how many of these guys you would have to eat to satisfy your hunger. In 2013, Bat Conservation International listed this tiny bat as one of 35 species of bat on its priority list, and in 2014, the people of Guinea were banned from eating bat meat over concerns of spreading the Ebola virus. Hopefully, with conservation efforts continued into the future, these bats will be able to hang around for just a little while longer. Bumblebee Bat The bumblebee bat, also known as the hog-nosed bat, shares a distinct look compared to a pig due to its pig-like snout. That's about the only thing he has in common with the pig, as he's known to be arguably the smallest mammal in the world, and absolutely the smallest bat. Compared to a bumblebee in size, while most bats are fruitvores, this guy is known as an insectivore. He only eats insects. The bumblebee bat is known to share a cave with an average of 100 other bats. I can barely stand in an elevator with three other people, but I'm sure there's plenty of room. The bumblebee bat is only 36 to 55 millimeters in length, and you can find him in caves in Myanmar and Thailand, with only leaving for 20 to 30 minutes a day to roost and forage. I think this species has a lot in common with me. While these bats are not extinct, they are certainly threatened and experiencing a downward trend in population. Reasons for this downward trend can be attributed to people collecting these bats for souvenirs, monks occupying their caves for meditation, and of course, deforestation. These bats, along with his bat cousins, are great at controlling pests, pollination, and even dispersing seeds to empty forests. Can you believe that even the smallest animals can have such a big impact? <laughs> Dwarf Epauled Fruit Bat This species of mega bat has a pretty contradictory common name in that he's named a dwarf epauled fruit bat, but this guy is from West and Central Africa and could be described as having secondary sexual demorphic traits. While some animals you have to take an extra peek at their nether regions to tell if they're male or female, one can tell that this guy is that males have the ability to erect the base of their ears. Also, females are about 10% larger in body mass as well as wingspan. Their diet of both fruits and insects make these guys very advantageous to nature, as they're not only great winged exterminators, they also have the ability to pollinate plants. I'd call this an absolute friendship with benefits relationship if you ask me. Interesting fact, these bats are common carriers of the Ebola virus. While the virus has no effect on them, there is a possibility of viral transmission from bat to humans as these bats can come to close contact with humans as they feast on fruit. I think I'll feast as separate from them as I can. Tilda's Yellow-Shouldered Bat Tilda's yellow-shouldered bat hails from South America and a small patch of the Caribbean and is pretty similar to all his bat cousins. One unique and obvious feature of this bat is his adorably cute and very unique face. This little guy is only 44 to 48 millimeters in length and like most of his bat relatives, survives on fruit. Named yellow-shouldered bat for its beautifully displayed tricolored fur, he also has a nice set of sharp chompers on him as well. His distinct nose leaf is prominent and obvious, and unlike some other bats, they aren't endangered or threatened. They're listed with the IUCN as being of least concern and are very abundant in their habitat. Batman, Bat Boy, Batter Up, bats are everywhere. From the cute and the cuddly to the huge and super ugly, these winged seed droppers are responsible for replanting entire forests and keeping ecosystems in harmony. Without them, we'd be overrun by insects and wouldn't have any fruit trees left. Well, maybe that's a stretch, but it's very possible that we may not have many of these fascinating and diverse little creatures left in the near future. So hopefully, with the continued effort of the many conservation groups and scientists and researchers, we'll be able to show our grandchildren these awesome creatures for years to come.